I'm going to read to you now 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave every, everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. Love does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to read you a second scripture. So let's hear the beginning of the story of Samuel from 1 Samuel chapter 1. There was a man named Elkanah who lived in Ramah in the region of Zeph in the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zaph of Ephraim. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. Peninnah, 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 had children, but Hannah did not. Each year, Elkanah would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of Heaven's armies at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. On the days Elkanah presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to Peninnah and each of her children. And though he loved Hannah, he would only give her one choice portion because the Lord had not had given her no children. So Peninnah would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year, it was the same. Peninnah would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having ten sons? Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime, and as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her, seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound. He thought, she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk? 
he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger. But I am very discouraged, and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. This, too, is the word of God for the people of God. Hannah struggled for years, years, waiting to have a baby. Today's section of the love chapter is that first line. Love is patient. And usually when I preach about patience, uh, I'm preaching about the small things of this life that keep us from treating each other well because we're impatient. But this has been a season of us experiencing a need for that different level of patience. Anyone who has been waiting for a baby or waiting for a pregnancy or waiting for an adoption knows the soul-wrenching pain that comes from feeling incomplete until you get the thing. Anyone who's been waiting for that call from the doctor, waiting to see if the medicine worked, waiting to see if they're going to live, knows the soul-wrenching pain of feeling completely powerless and not having anything to do but sit and wait. You see, this has been uh, seasons of waiting, waiting for an epidemic to end and it keeps going and going. Some of us have been waiting for answers, waiting for babies, waiting for that job or that relief. And we hear in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is patient. The Bible has these stories over and over again of people who are waiting to have a baby and God blesses them with a baby. But it's often after a long period of waiting, a ridiculous amount of waiting. This passage says that year after year, Hannah was mocked, belittled. Hannah wept before the Lord because all she wanted was a baby and she didn't get it year after year. And so she cried and she prayed and she was forced to learn patience. Patience is learning how to have peace when you don't have control over your life. And some days that is easier than others, isn't it? Patience is knowing that God is in control, even when it feels like God is not keeping God's promises. God has abandoned you. Patience is not giving up. But this bigger patience that many of us have been forced to live with is one that can be all-encompassing. It can take over your life. Once you are aware that someone you love has cancer or you have cancer, you are aware of every instance of cancer that you come across throughout the day. Every time the phone rings, you wonder if that is the doctor saying, yes, the scan came out clear or no, the scan did not come out clear. When you are longing for a baby, there are babies everywhere. I remember being a young woman and longing for a husband I got over it, but everywhere I went, there was love. And I'd look at people and say, they got a husband. I can't get a husband and they got a husband. God, what? Sometimes the things we are seeking patience for are so large and so out of our control that we need to flip the script on this passage. 
Love is patient. And friends, God is love. So those days when you can't find patience, when you feel that your skin is crawling, when you have given up on God, when you have given up on hope, God is being patient with you. If you're fighting an addiction, every single day is a struggle and you don't feel that you have accomplished something until you can look back a year, two years, three years later, and it never ends. And God is patient with you. Some of us are seeking patience for things that are not going to have resolution. And God is patient with you. Why do I say this? Uh, it is okay sometimes to be angry with God. It is sometimes okay to give up or just not feel happy all the time. I'm saying this because our God is faithful to us, even if we can't see the big picture. And our God is patient and loving and sitting with us through the pain or the struggle or the fear. God is patient with us when we can't see growth in ourselves. We can't see hope for ourselves or for loved ones. And it doesn't change God's promise for your life or for mine. Hannah eventually got her baby and she gave that baby back up to God. It wasn't how she expected things to be. It wasn't the baby she expected. She did have to then give that baby to God. And that God, that baby became Samuel, this prophet who guided the nation of Israel. But she had years of continuing to go to God and praying and weeping and ignoring the judgmental eyes of others. And God was with her and God was patient because love is patient. Today, I pray that you are able to love yourself enough to give yourself a little patience, to give those around you patience, grace in this journey. And if that feels impossible, if you are just too weary or too uncertain or too fearful, I pray that you find hope in the fact that God is love and God is patient with you and God is with you through the journey. That is good news indeed. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you uh, have plans and hopes and dreams for our lives. Forgive us for the days when we are so short-sighted that we lose hope in what you know to be the truth of who we are. Help us to be people who are patient with one another, patient with ourselves. And even more difficult, God, help us to be patient with you when your timing and your story for our lives doesn't line up with expectations. Let our patience be rewarded with joy, peace, and love in our lives. Amen.